Get mm -hmm. that water in, girl. <laughs> this is how you drink water when, when you, you have, have lipstick, lipstick on. on. <laughs> to my channel What's and up? guess what I'm with I'm so excited. and we're collabing today and I'm so excited we did actually we did each other's makeup and yes, we did. I can't wait for you guys to watch this video and go to her page and watch hers because she did an amazing job I love oh, my thank makeup. you You're beautiful thank you so much she did an amazing job she did an amazing amazing job you guys have to go oh. on comment below <laughs> and let me know your thoughts on this video and if you guys watch her video let me know this too. is like my go-to bridal look that i do on my brides yes when brides let me do my thing exactly um, so i decided to recreate it on her and she looks stunning thank you so much that's because of you and so yeah so we did a bridal look for her channel and for my channel we did like a nighttime makeup look I just went with the flow I think this is really good for nighttime and I'm obsessed with that I'm so I'm so happy and it, it was a lot of pressure though because she's really good at what she does she's really good and I love her I work. don't know why she's saying all that because no it's amazing. true it's true like, like you did my makeup the way I would do my makeup really and I love that that you didn't like change my face you, you made me look like how I would do my makeup and I love that yay I'm so excited so I'm sharing so many tips we're sharing so many tips so make sure you comment below don't forget to subscribe to join the bravo fam the bravo squad and follow me on all other <coughs> social media platforms facebook twitter and instagram yep. and comment below you your that. favorite part <laughs> and check out her page Thank for you. my um transformation yes i'll see you guys on my page there we go so let's get started let's start and i already did one side one side is done and i am taking care of the other side and i'm gonna start off with the brows i do start a little bit different and i love to use two different shades of pencils so i've been loving this method lately for the dark shade i am going to be using the benefit my precisely my brow pencil in the shade number six and for the lighter shade i'm going to be using wonder beauty brow pencil in the shade taupe so i start with the darker pencil and i start from the bottom of the brow building it all the way to the tail of the brow doing very light strokes creating pieces of hair and then I work myself to the top of the brow to really shape the brow and give it that nice arch and lifted effect and then once I finish with the darker pencil and I feel like it's okay I am going to move on to the taupe shade and apply this right in the beginning of the brow doing the same movement light strokes and building the brow all the way to the middle and I just love this because it gives it that more natural effect and as you can see it's like more feathery so try this method let me know what you think and next, I move on to an angle brush. This one is from Tarte. It has a spoolie on the other side. I really love this brush. And I'm going to really spread the product throughout the brow, fill in any spots that I might have missed with a pencil instead of adding more product in. I just love to do this, but you know, you can just leave it as it is. But I just love to do the angle brush after. I'm gonna put a little bit of the Shape Tape Concealer from Tarte with the tiniest amount. You don't have to go like super extra. I honestly don't like to be super dramatic underneath my eye just to like clean it up and sharpen the brow. Really like to concentrate it on the arch to give it that lift. And bring it all the way down, mm -hmm. like almost like an invisible line. For this and I do makeup differently than her in some areas most mm -hmm. areas I feel like we're very similar because then your makeup turned out kind of like how you would do it yeah we just exactly have different... how I would do it it's crazy yeah She's like, she literally read my mind we just have different techniques on how we do things like I never do concealer underneath the brow but I use a different product so you want to make sure that you blend these um, lined and you use like a fluffy brush or you can use the same flat brush. I just like to use a fluffier brush. And then you want to do the same thing at the top of the brow and diffuse the line. And let's move on to, so and it looks like good. feathery. Like yeah. you can leave like brush, even if the hair is picking through after this line here, like it looks like feathery. Like it doesn't, it looks like wispy. It looks more like a model brow. Yes, there we go. I love that look. Okay, so now we're gonna be using, I know Viosa is always with the painterly, which I love too, but we're gonna use a new one for her, the primer from Urban Decay. And you wanna go ahead and apply this primer 
all over the eye and I absolutely love this primer because it just makes your eyeshadows last all day. Once it dries, it's like it's not moving so nothing creases and your shadows look more vibrant but you do have to work with it quickly because it dries so you wanna make sure it's well blended. So now for the eyes, I want to do something different, all mattes, and then we're going to add shimmer at the end in the inner corner. I'm going to be using the Dose of Colors Baked Browns. I'm so excited to be trying something different, and I really love the pigmentation, as you can see, on the other eye. I never actually used Dose of Colors. I know, surprising. But um, yeah, I'm excited. So we're putting each other on to new products. Yeah, exactly. So I'm yeah. excited. Ooh. I love Dose of Colors using the lighter brown first as a transition color and I'm going to start building it. This is a 224 brush from MAC. Such a staple brush. Such a staple brush. All right, so I'm going to apply this right into the crease of the eye, doing circle motions, going back and forth, and uh, building the color very softly. So you want to make sure you start with a little bit of product and then build it up. This is going to be your transition shade. This is going to help you blend those darker shades that are coming right after. Also, I like to do this, like swipe it up to the tail the brow to diffuse it. Me too. Because it just like gives a nice effect. That's why it looks really nice up uh, on the other side. And I also like cleaned it up also afterwards with a wipey. Mm -hmm. Move on to the more to the more like warm red tone. And I'm going to use like a really small brush if I can find it. I'm gonna be using the Morphe M five um, O seven. I love that brush too. Oh, so good. Because it really just gets the crease to be more precise. Yes. It doesn't spread the color. So if you really, if you're wondering how people get that crease, it's because they use the smaller brushes. You cannot try to do a, a crease with big brushes. And I think I also made that mistake in the beginning when I started doing makeup. I was like wondering how do people get these creases so nice? And it's because you need to have the right brushes for the right look. And you have to be patient when you're blending. You can't just think you're going to do your eye makeup in two seconds. Exactly. Like a little bit of product on the brush at a time is the best for me at least. Like I don't pick up a lot of, I build it up, you know? Yeah, exactly. So what I'm doing now is just bringing this color to the middle of the eye because that's going to be a nice transition for like the deeper dark tone. So I'm not only it just... It looks good. <laughs> thank you. So I'm not really like placing it just at the outer corner. I'm bringing it all the way down and diffusing it with the eye base. So it gives me like a nice look once I put the dark brown over it. So with that same brush, I am going to uh, really accentuate the crease with that color. And that's why I love this brush because it just really precisely applied the, the color without moving it too much like upward or downward into the lid. And I'm going to switch to one of my other favorites, which is from the Unicorn Collection from Tarte, which is like a tamper brush. It's not like super big, but not so small. It's super soft and it just like really blends out the edges without moving the product too much. Oh, I'm gonna use the brown though now and I'm, I'm actually going to concentrate this like really on the outer part of the eye and I'm not gonna move it too much to the center. So I'm just trying to deepen that outer part of the eye. So You gotta have it in you, I guess. I don't know, you just have to love it. And the thing is, it's not that they did a bad job, it just wasn't my style. You know, they made me look like a different person. I think that's key yeah, when you're yes, a makeup yes, artist. Yes, I completely understand. When you're like, from. like when I did your makeup, I was like, "Do you feel like yourself?" And you were like, "I feel like completely myself." Because I've had clients tell me, like, the reason why I continue to book you all the time is because you don't change my face. You make me look like me. Just yeah, like a better. I version think it's like knowing how to listen. I think that's where a lot of people lack. A lot of artists that they think that because they do their makeup a certain way they think everyone else will love that way yeah. the way that they do their own makeup and it's completely false you gotta adjust your technique to everyone's exactly. face because it's not gonna be you know it's not you know you like a smoky eye but that person might not like smoky eye or you get those customers that they give you a picture and they don't understand that that's a lot of makeup like yeah. you really want to look like that yeah. and then you do something completely natural and they're okay with it like I, they love it like my signature look i do like a super bright highlight mm -hmm. and i have clients that will tell me like that's the first thing they say to me when they when I, they sit on my chair they're like 
I know that's your thing, but I don't like that. Yeah. And I just won't do it on that. Or I'll do it like a soft, subtle. And it's not to be, and, and you can't get offended no, by it. No, absolutely not. That's just my look. And most people like that look. But there's like a few clients that will be like, oh, I just don't like the inner corner highlight to be so bright. And then you have to listen to them and you don't do it. Or there's clients like we like more of a like a winged out kind of mm -hmm. eyeshadow. There's clients that like it round. Yeah. So you have to ask. Or those the black questions. liner. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes you do looks that is not your look, and you don't feel like whoa, like no. Mm -hmm. But it's your client. Is that what people like? Yeah. And that's good because everyone that shows that there is a style for. Yeah. Everyone has a different. Grab a little bit of that concealer, the same um, concealer that I apply for the brows, and I'm gonna start cutting the inner part of the eye. I grab actually an angle brush guys I switched it because it's not working from this this angle the bristles are not too still so I'm getting the concealer everywhere once you put that line even if you mess up a little bit you can I'm gonna go back to the brush that I was using taking off the excess and just like diffusing them diffuse the, the sides yeah you diffuse the size. I'm go back to the other one too. This one. All right, so we're gonna use um, the more lighter top. Line it right over that concealer. I have to Do say, it. when I first started YouTube. I had a really hard time looking straight into the camera the entire time because it just feels weird. weird. Like you're not talking to a human. You're not talking to a person right in front of you live. You're talking to the camera, which then in turn will be your audience. Yeah. So it's nice to look into the camera, but I definitely had a hard time in the beginning. It's hard. It's hard. People think that filming YouTube videos is easy. That's why it's... blogging is hard. Quick tip. Um, when I, if you want to like, when you're doing a, a wing liner on other person, you could use like first trace your liner with a shadow. So I always use brown, sure, because it's easier to blend shadow. Agreed. Than to mess up a gel liner and try to fix it. So if you trace the liner first with shadow, trust me, your life is gonna trust me. Your life is gonna be so much easier when you do the gel liner, and it's gonna like help you and guide you, you know. So right after that, I am going to apply black track from Mac, and I do it very lightly, so it's gonna look wash out because I don't grab too much product. I like to first trace the line, make sure everything is nice and smooth, and then I build up the liner and I apply more gel. And once I'm done, I seal the deal with a liquid liner, which I'll show you what I do because I apply the lashes first, but yeah, this is how I do the liner. I wanna lift it, make sure you really get that liner on the lashes, because sometimes a lot of people misses that part, and you can see it. That is my biggest pet peeve. When you could see the space uh, between your lashes yeah, and you, the eyeliner. You gotta make sure you really get in there. Really, really, really get in there. What I am going to do though, I know I'm gonna, I always go over the liner, with a black eyeliner. This is actually from The Balm and this is actually Biosa's. But obviously if it was somebody else's, I would just do an angle brush and put it on my arm. Right, since um, it's mine, you're just gonna go directly yeah. on it. So we're going to be using the style Athena from Iris Beauty, but first we have to apply mascara. This is first. my mascara, so I'm just directly going with the mascara. Yeah, I'm just waiting until here, I'm in the back here, waiting until the lash dries, the glue a little bit, it's tacky. It's just much faster. See, we make this <laughs> yep. Thank God I didn't have your foundation, girl. If not, I would have been like, no. I know. <laughs> but if you guys do make that mistake when your foundation is on, the best thing that you can do is, is let, let it dry, dry all yes. the way. And then you take either a Q-tip or a spoolie. Spoolie works best. You take a clean spoolie and you just like scrape it off. Yep. And then you could just put a little highlight over it to kind of hide the messiness. But don't try to wipe it when it's still wet. That's the worst mistake. So I make the client look down and then with a spoolie, I'll just brush them through with the mascara that is almost like semi-dry wet. So that way they stick together. There we go. Mm -hmm. So we're going with the, the Balm liner over it. 
and this is gonna make it really dark and crispy. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab just like a wipey and just go here and sharpen that liner. Okay, I'm going to use the Makeup Forever um, Hydrating Primer and then I'm going to use some of the high points on her face. We're gonna use the MAC Oil Drops, which are really, really good. I've never used them. No? So I'm really excited. So the first thing that I'm going to do is apply the Makeup Forever Primer all over his skin with the LC sponge. And then I am going to apply the oil drops. I'm going to be using two drops and apply it right on the high points of her skin. So I'm not going to do it all over. I'm not going to even mix it with the foundation. I'm just going to apply it directly to the skin and right on her cheekbones. I'm also going to apply a little bit on her nose and around the sides of her nose because that area tends to be a little drier and that way the foundation just glides on very nicely on that area and also a little bit on her forehead so you really want to be careful with oil drops because sometimes they can overwhelm the skin so now I'm going to use the makeup forever matte velvet plus you talked about this I mean I never used this before this is um, yeah so Camilla foundation. asked me like what foundation I would want to use and this is a foundation that never, ever fails me. Like summer, winter, any season, um, it doesn't fail me ever. So I feel like I always end up going for this when I know that I need it to work. So since she's working on my face for the first time, I, I didn't want to just let her use any old foundation and then it doesn't work, you know? This never fails me. The coverage is full coverage with like a matte velvet finish. Exactly what the name says, matte velvet. So... So right after that, I am going to start concealer. I'm going to be using light medium honey and light neutral for underneath her eyes. And these are her own concealers, so that's why I'm applying them right directly onto her skin. And I'm using a blush beauty blender because it's like the perfect size for underneath the eye. Yeah. So I'm going to use the one that it has more yellow. And then what I do is just apply it right on the high points. So it like highlights here. Look at that. Then I put maybe a little bit here to just unify this so it creates like that nice V. Mm -hmm. See, I don't do it like this, but I like to see new techniques. So with I, the apples of the cheeks, you wanna make sure that that is like bright so it lifts up the face mm -hmm. if you're not putting any blood. All right, and to set underneath the eyes, I am going to be using Patrick Star Collab with MAC Cosmetics Translucent Powder, and I'm going to grab this brush. And you wanna grab a small brush and then dab the excess and dab, dab, dab the translucent powder onto the skin without moving the concealer. So you don't wanna brush it through, you wanna dab it onto the skin, doing dabbing motions to avoid any lines and to really set underneath the eye. And then to set the rest of the face, I am going to be using the Gerlactic Powder in the shade Fair, which I loved how it wore on my skin, so I'm going to be using it on Viosa as well. Doing dabbing motions and really pressing it onto the skin. The brown circles, but I'm going to try to avoid a little bit of the area, that high point of the skin, the skin of the face. I do the same thing. So the reason why, for any, any of you who might not know this, the reason why we like to set, like wherever we're gonna do bronzer, like the contour area, the reason why we like to set it with powder first is because if you just go ahead with bronzer and you start contouring your cheeks, the bronzer can be a little bit patchy or muddy mm -hmm. if it goes directly on top of the foundation. So if it goes on top of powder, then it's not That's patchy fine. and yeah. the muddy looking. 
All right, so now we're going to be using the Gerlactin powder in the shade Cavo to contour her face and bronze her skin. And this is a matte bronzer, which I love to start off with a matte bronzer and then move on into any shimmers. Like if I want to use like a bronzer with a little bit of shimmer, I do that after this. So as you can see, I'm using the bristles of the brush, picking up a little bit of product and building it up. And I am not moving the foundation. I'm just lightly applying it on. So you want to make sure that you're very gentle when you do this. So the bronzer she, she's using, she's never used before, so it's her first time. And then the bronzer she's going to use after on top of this, which is like more of a shimmery bronzer, I've never worked with, so I'm really excited to try it. Especially yeah. because I love Hourglass. So well, they have so many great products. And um, the Hourglass, I don't know if you want to show it so they know what we're talking about. Yeah, so we're talking about this product right here. See how it's like that has that marble look? These are baked. I have a lot of their highlights, but I've never tried their bronzer, so I'm really excited. And what she's going to do is she's going to use this bro this uh, hourglass bronzer that I just showed you guys on top of this matte bronzer that she's using now. Yeah, because I don't like to use a shimmer bronzer alone. I like to do the matte all over, first. Yeah, because it's too much. It's too much to do all over. So I just like to apply the matte first and then on the high points of the skin um, of the face. I keep saying skin. On the high points yeah. of the face, apply the, the shimmer one. to the hourglass bronzer I am going to apply this right where you would apply the blush and push it up to the bronzer to kind of like blend these two together and create a little bit more dimension and more warmth and this has a little bit of glow so it gives you that youthful look and really nice and luminous skin all around the face all right, so I'm gonna finish up underneath her eyes, her lower lash line, and I'm going to apply a little bit of translucent powder right underneath to just help me with any shadow fallouts so that way my concealer doesn't get ruined. And I'm going to be using it in a pointy brush and use the first color that we use, the softer brown, right underneath her eye and just really nice and blended without any harsh lines. Then with an angle brush, I'm gonna grab more of that warmth um, brown tone and apply it right only at the outer part of her eyes and as you can see it's giving her a little bit more definition and i just love it so much and then i just go back and blend out the edges with that point hairbrush <laughs> So she's gonna do mascara on her body lashes. I really don't wanna ruin it. And it's her own mascara, so she can go right in. Uh, Crystal Avalanche by MAC. Wow, it's like and super it's an OG. Bright. It looks just white, right? But look at this. Like, look Whoa. how shimmery, yeah. like how metallic -y it is. It's not shimmery, it's metallic. metallic. The person looked that way. So the brush is not, but you really get that inner corner right in there. Okay, I'm going to lay it on first the Master Chrome from Maybelline in Molten Rose Gold. Lay it over here. I like to bring it up to like the brow here. I know you don't. Use the highlight under the brow, but I'm actually going to do it for you. Yeah, do a it. little bit. Already, I know. It says I'm gonna put it right here on the high point of the brow bone, just right there. It's like you can. It's it all goes together so seamless. Fan brush that is really detailed, like it's very like really tiny like this corner that I'm going to use and I grab a little bit of the artist couture this you gotta be really careful because a little bit of this and it, can, and it can go all over the place if you do too much yeah and I'm gonna spray a little bit of this of the spray and I'm literally gonna apply it right right where I want the light to hit it to hit it do you guys right see there. that <laughs> right there it's, why does highlight get me so excited no, this is like so good. So we're mixing. What does Jacqueline Hill say? She goes, highlight makes me horny. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was way too. Yeah, I can show you La Peach. La Peach, okay. you'll fall in love. All right, 
it. So you get that inner. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Oh, I just die. I just came to this powder. I just like to add more of the other one, the rose. That Maybelline one. The Maybelline one right on the tip. It's like a loose dick. <laughs> <laughs> now is when you let your yourself loose at this and time. And now she's putting some chicken grease on my chin. There, there <laughs> every time I every time I do a highlight there, I feel like I just finished eating greasy wind. Right. Things. Like I just went to the gym but I and love got it. like, yeah. But you wanna go back with the blender and just like blend the excess. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add Mm -hmm. I just never do that. Just to make it but... more synced in. Mm -hmm. Yes. Makes just make it fuller. fuller. All right, so now I am going to finish up the brows with a little bit of gel. This is the Fiverr Voluminizer from Maybelline. This is just going to add a little bit of color, but it's I use the shade that is way lighter than her brow tone. But I've just been loving this method lately because it just gives you like that 3D effect and it just looks so awesome and super cool. All right, so for the lips, I'm going to show you guys how to do my favorite trick to make your, light, your lips look fuller and I'm going to be using two different colors like a, um, a brownish tone for the liner which is Oak by MAC and also and then the pink print by um, Nicki Minaj and MAC collaboration. All right you want to go ahead and start lining up lips you can overdone it a little bit because honestly this shade is super neutral that you won't even be able to tell and that's why I love it so much. If you're more on the medium to dark skin tone you can use cork from MAC which is one of my favorites and then you can want to go ahead and apply the lipstick right in the middle of the lips and look at that pouch already. Look at that those, those fuller lips and you want to just blend out the edges and I I promise you guys this photograph so beautifully and it's just beautiful. I'm gonna be using the Coconut Fix Plus Setting Spray. Mm. It smells so good, so good. There we go. All right, guys, so we have come to an end. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this makeover I did on my friend Viosa. Don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and check out her page. I'll leave all her info down in the description so you guys can go and check out the look that she did on me, which I absolutely love. So make sure you check it out, and don't forget to share this video with your makeup besties. See you guys on my next video. Bye. Do I have a crutch What do I have? This over here. Do this for you or something.